The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their pilacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your brother. You have but one Father in heaven. Do not be called Master. You have but one Master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Our non-Catholic brethren often use this verse from the gospel to criticize us Catholics for addressing or referring our priest as father, claiming that this contradicts with the words of Jesus in the Gospel reading. They argue that this statement of Jesus in today's Gospel should be understood literally. However, if we strictly adhere to the literal interpretation of this passage, then why do we use terms father, tatai, daddy for our biological fathers without violating these words of Jesus. Besides, this passage prohibits using titles not just father, but also teacher and rabbi. And yet, we have no reservation about addressing our school teachers as teacher and think that we are violating the teaching of Jesus. Our non-Catholic brothers and sisters would argue further that we do not violate these words of Jesus when we call our biological father or earthly father as father, daddy, or tatay because allegedly Jesus was talking about a spiritual father. But if we try to look at the gospel, the verse does not specify or does not qualify whether or not Jesus was referring to an earthly father or a spiritual father. The sacred scripture show us that the apostles of Jesus did not adhere to the literal interpretation of this passage, that they too considered themselves fathers of the faithful. The Apostle Paul, for instance, in the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 14 to 15, St. Paul said, I am writing to you not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. Even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you did not have many fathers. For in Christ, 
I became your father through the gospel. That Saint Paul became the spiritual father of the people of Corinth through the gospel. And he also said in his first letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verse 2, Saint Paul said to Timothy, my true son in the faith, that Saint Paul identified himself as the father of Timothy in the faith. John, the beloved disciple, the evangelist, also considered himself as a father of the Christian community. In the first letter of John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, John said, I am writing you this, my dear children, so that you may avoid sin. That this verse highlights the desire of John for the Christian community to live a righteous life and find redemption through Christ as their father of faith, as a spiritual father for these people. And in the third letter of John, chapter 1, verse 4, John expressed his deep joy by saying, I could not find greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the faith. The John also consider himself as the father of the Christian community. The message of Christ in today's gospel, therefore, is primarily concerned with attitudes and behavior rather than mere use of words and terminologies. Why did Jesus forbid his disciples from using titles such as father, teacher, and rabbi? It was because these titles have the potential to be abused and misused. That the prohibition against using these titles pertains specifically for their, to their abusive sense. And throughout history, many individuals have exploited their titles, position in government and organization and honor to threaten, belittle, exploit, even oppress other people. In essence, today's gospel reading is a clear reminder to all individuals in possession of authority, including church leaders, public servants, and even head of the family, that instead of assuming a role of dominance, it is crucial that we adapt the mentality of being servants to all, acting as instruments of God's will. In essence, what truly matters is the act of service itself. If our goal is to become exceptional human being and devout followers of Christ or Christians, we must dedicate ourselves to serving others. And this can be done in various ways, such as tending to their physical and material necessities, as simple as cooking meals, performing household tasks for our families and others in need. Additionally, our service can extend to addressing the emotional and psychological needs of those around us. And this involves offering companionship in times of distress, fostering friendship, providing words of hope and encouragement, demonstrating acceptance while acknowledging and appreciating their worth. Furthermore, another aspect of service lies in meeting a spiritual and faith-related needs of others. We can accomplish this by setting positive example through our actions, leading humble and modest lifestyles, and engaging in various spiritual practices. Brothers and sisters, by embracing the spirit of service in these diverse forms, we are not only fulfilling our duty to others, but also grow personally and spiritually. 
true greatness is achieved through selfless service. And as followers of Christ, as Christians, it is our common vocation, it is our calling to be devoted servants to all.